So the Rutgers Scarlet Knights surprising this Princeton crowd, a crowd that is packed to the rafters here at Jadwin Gym as the Scarlet Knights lead 26-21. Don't forget, weeknights at 7 and 11.30 on New Jersey Network. Tune in for New Jersey Network News. Ken Manhattan, Steve Highsmith, myself, or Jerry Henry on sports. And Princeton, uh, of course, enjoying the moment here, the many halftime festivities, and uh, the youngster out there shooting free throws. Roy, he looks pretty good. Again, he just made one. <laughs> well, he's one up on Chris Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back at Jadwin Jim. We're at halftime where the Scarlet Knights lead the Tigers 26 to 21. The Tiger trying to roar for the 30th straight home victory here at Jadwin, but Rutgers and the Scarlet Knights having something to say about that. Let's check out our halftime stats. That not one of the first half highlights for that young, young man. And look at the field goal percentage. Princeton, uncharacteristic for them to shoot 40% from the floor, Roy. This is true. As a team, they've been, aver they've been averaging around 50%, or right at 50%, actually. And uh, Rutgers is uh, actually doing a pretty good job defensively on it. Rutgers at 45.8, well below what they shot against Wagner in the first half last week. Rebounding edge to the smaller Scarlet Knights. Yeah, that is something unusual because Princeton, their, well, their first six, seven guys are actually bigger than um, bigger than Rutgers. And Rutgers is having their problems uh, rebounding with these guys. And the Tigers with seven turnovers. Here's Mark Redden to Steve Worthy. This one for the highlight reel. This is true. That's good timing. Good look by Red into Worthy for the alley -oop. Steve Worthy with four points in the first half. On the Tigers' side, it was Leftwich to Mooney. Good pass. Leftwich, he threw two men and actually threw the pass into Mooney for the two. And Mike Jones inside. Mike Jones goes up strong, right off the glass. Good power move. Now the Tiger band entertaining us here at halftime. Now it's interesting, as we take a look at the leading scores, that Rutgers has been a streak stopper in the past. They ended Penn State's 24-game home win streak last year. The first half, Lumpkin leading the way for Rutgers. Princeton, Eastwick, and Jackson, the two outside shooters with seven apiece. Yeah, what's surprising to me is for Rutgers, first of all, uh, Worthy, not having such a good game, but not like the game he had against Wagner. And Eastwick, well, I really didn't think he was... Um, you know, he put up a lot of shots early, which surprised me. I figured mostly he would get his stuff off of uh, offensive rebounds and layups. All right, so we'll be back with the second half in a moment. Rutgers leading Princeton by five at the half. Now the Princeton Tigers have won three straight Ivy League titles. Nine of the last 16 years have led the nation in team defense. Last year, they gave up just under 49 points a game. And that was the best in the country. Well, a lot of people think that, you know, here's Princeton, they have a deliberate style of offense, so obviously they slow people down. But they play very good defense also. Pete Grill teaches very good defensive principles. So, of course, the, you know, their defense is going to be great. And that's why they've been leading the team, uh, nation in defense. Pete Carrill, a 1952 graduate of Lafayette, Celebrating his silver anniversary here in Princeton. And Bobby Wenzel, who averaged 13 and a half points a game and was the Rutgers MVP in 1969-70 and 70-71. There's a good look at Eddie Jordan and D'Alessio and then Rick Danica. A lot of points between Jordan, Danica, and Wenzel. We had to slide you over there as well, Hinson. Oh, I tell you, they're doing a great job here. I'm really impressed by the way that uh, Rutgers staff has really took to, the, uh, took to Bob and his, and his staff. And here's a guy that might join the Scarlet Knights in the record books when you talk about scoring Steve Worthy. He'll have to do it, though, in just two seasons. The former Trenton High School standout 
I can remember doing his group four title game. They not, faced Elizabeth and Luther Wright. Not having such a great game, as I said earlier. He's um, definitely going to have to look to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, turned down a, a lot of shots that the other night he would have taken. Don't forget, coming up, our next game, Tuesday night, December 10th, PSCNG Game of the Week, featuring the Montclair State Red Hawks of the New Jersey Athletic Conference. The game at Trent State, the Lions and Donnie Marsh. And we hope you'll join us next Tuesday night, live at 8 o'clock on NJN. Tigers want, the fans want to get their Princeton team back into this one. They trail by five as we open the second half of play with Princeton. And George Lefwich inbounding the ball. It's Lefwich, Jackson, Hilscher playing with three fouls. Eastwick and Mooney. Hilscher goes on Weiler. Weiler got a piece. And it's Alvin Rich grabbing the loose ball. Rich along with Redden, Worthy, Chuck Weiler, and Mike Jones. So Wenzel mixes up the lineup here in the second half. Jones goes back out top, and Wilson yells out, hey, let's weave. A lot of options off this weave, Roy. Yeah, this is true. They, I mean, they can look to do a lot of things. But you know what? The person is doing one fifth thing, which is not allowing them to weave. As uh, there was a steal there by uh, Princeton. They're Sean not... Jackson stepped into the lane and batted it away. One thing about the weave, Princeton is jumping out and forcing them to go back the way they came instead of letting them actually lead the weave across the court. Asked Pete Carrill about the weave before the game. He said, boy, that's a tough little play to defend. It's very clever. And Rutgers, we can't extend our zone against that weave because then we'll give them a drive and a lane to the basket. But talking to Eddie Jordan, he said the weave was put in to actually help their guys create shots for themselves. Seven on the shot clock. Sean Jackson, three-point shot off rim. And Alvin Rich with the rebound. Jordan also said that it slows Rutgers down at the offensive end. They want to be an aggressive, fast-paced team on the defensive side of the ball. But then offensively, the weave forces them to slow down and be patient. Well, I tell you, with a plan of team like Princeton, you don't need to be forced to be patient. <laughs> Jones up and down with the ball, but Jackson had a hand on it for Princeton. And now the Tiger fans rise onto their feet. Princeton down by five. Two minutes into the half, and we're waiting for our first basket. Both teams right now are showing a lot of patience, trying to get a good shot. East week, who had seven points in the first half for Princeton. This is Leftwich. George Leftwich knocks down a three. Now he almost shoots that shot from, seems like his hip. He kind of like winds it up and throws it up there. Kind of unorthodox to say the least. Well, they list Leftwich at 6'2", 185, and 6'2", maybe uh, on his tiptoe. <laughs> Redden tries to answer Chuck Weiler, offensive rebound, and fouled inside. I tell you, for Rutgers, that's a, a good way to get back in the game. Uh, well, the good way to well, stay in the game, I should say, is actually keep going to the offensive boards. Uh, Seems like the uh, Princeton guys are just step slow going for the, uh, getting those defensive rebounds. Wenzel sends Lumpkin in. But the more important move for Princeton is Jimmy Lane for Rick Hilscher. Hilscher with four personal fouls. We've got 17.08 to play in the second half. He's been in foul trouble the whole night, and Rutgers is definitely um, going to exploit that if he, if he comes back in, and when he comes back in. Chuck Weiler with his first point of the evening. A sophomore from Haddonfield, New Jersey. Had problems with asthma as a freshman. Russell says that they've gone through a number of medications, and they found one that works. It's... It's exercise-induced asthma, but they've been able to bring it under control. And as a result, Chuck Weiler is on the floor more. Yes, because he saw limited minutes last year. And it was good to see him out there quite uh, more minutes because he definitely does some good things out there. 28-24. Rutgers with the lead. Defense! 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 
Jimmy Lane, who was a backup to Kit Miller last year. Pete says he knows the offense. He just needs a little more experience and playing time, and he's getting it tonight. Ten on the shot clock. Jackson off the screen. Oh. I thought that was going to take one of those Sam Jones bounces. I, we're on the same the track. <laughs> <laughs> Tigers, full court pressure. Redden gets it into Lumpkin. Well, Donnell dribbling against the press quickly to Redden. Left side, Chuck Weiler oh. in and out. Was torn between banking it and jamming it. And missed the shot. Great hustle by both teams right now. <laughs> Possession arrow favors the Scarlet Knights. I tell you, it's, it's a shame that we don't have referees who actually can pull the ball up for jump balls because no, neither team should be penalized for that hustle right there. David Santiago, the freshman from the Bronx, Adlai Stevenson High School. Comes in at the to the backcourt along with Steve Worthy. Work is by four. Worthy putting on a dribbling exhibition and is fouled by Jimmy Lane. That time Worthy got a little bit too cute there with the dribble and almost turned the ball over. Fortunately, it was a, he got a foul called on Jimmy Lane. Pete wanted it traveling. We'll take a timeout. Rutgers leading Princeton 28-24. Back in Tiger Town. Pat Scanlon and Roy Henson. Well, the Tigers hoping for something to celebrate, but Princeton has scored just three points in the last nine minutes and 33 seconds. Rutgers is doing a great job of making them shoot shots that obviously you would have hand in the face. Normally they would hit, but they're not hitting their shots at all. Lumpkin the inbound. Santiago, who also played for the Gauchos, a uh, club team in the Bronx last season. It's a big reputation, and Wentz says he's very far along for a freshman guard. Lumpkin, from very far away from the hoop. NBA three-pointer, to say the least. But it doesn't go down. He has confidence in that shot, and, uh, you know, I've seen him hit those shots, so I'm not surprised that he's taking them. And you got to keep taking them, right? The only way to make them. <laughs> East week, looking down to Jimmy Lane. And now Sean Jackson resets. Fifteen on the shot clock. East week for three. Yes. Very good job. Good patience by Princeton. East week. Shoot, he shot that ball like he was a guard. He's got 10 points to lead the Tiger offense, so Princeton breaks that streak. And they're within one at 28-27. Lumpkin, off glass. Good body control by Donnell Lumpkin, and he's got eight points. That definitely was good control. If he would have went like another step, he would have had an offensive foul called on him. The Rutgers answers quickly at the other end. Ball goes off Steve Worthy. Princeton maintains possession. Answers quickly and then applies some more pressure. Both teams are using a lot of pressure tonight. Rutgers back in a man-to-man -man now. Jimmy Lane looks inside and couldn't hook up with Eastwick, but Eastwick's not done yet. Oh, rejected by Wilder. Great rejection by Wilder. That's what Rutgers gets from Wilder, the good defense, and it's Luffledge going to the glass and is hammered inside with the shot clock running down. And the foul goes on Danell Lumpkin. They were making sure that, that <laughs> no one would actually get that ball up. We're going to take a look at that block again by Wilder. <laughs> Eastwick tries to go around them, <laughs> and actually Wilder blocks it, throws it out. 
Weiler at 6'9", 220. Mike Jones in. Jamal Phillips also checks in for the Scarlet Knights. And he'll replace Chuck Weiler. Two shots for George Lefwich, the senior from Washington, D.C. A little strong that time. Lefwich played 22 games as a freshman for the Tigers and has been a big part of the last three peaks. Three Ivy League titles in a row for Princeton. One of two for Lefwich. He's got four points. And Princeton is down by two. Santiago to Smith. And Smith spun and went out of bounds. That time was an ill-advised pass by Santiago. He should have thrown through the ball going as he was going out of bounds. Now the Tigers down by two, 13.50 left. The crowd getting anxious here at Jadwin Jim. is getting anxious because they can go up. With the three-pointer, they can actually go up. Santiago guilty of the foul inside. That is his first. Oh, the turnovers, nine to seven. Rutgers committing two more than Princeton. There's Mooney to inbound. Mooney's been quiet offensively. Jimmy Lane, you can tell he knows what to do in that high post spot, Roy. Yes, you can tell. He's been here for four years. And off the down screen by Jimmy Lane, Eastwood flashes up, knocks down a three. He's got 13 points, and the Tigers are up by one. Yeah, big change. Rutgers need a good shot here to break the momentum. They got the crowd in the game now. Wetzel calls out for the weave as Santiago starts it off. John Jackson has to be very careful not to get run into a screen out top by Jamal Phillips. This is true. He's trying to keep the ball on one side, but he's always still keeping the back of his mind that there's a high pick up there. And Phillips at 6'7", 215 can hurt you. Lumpkin wildly looks inside. Phillips couldn't control. Turnover Rutgers. That time Lumpkin went up, had a hand in his face and tried to pass it off to bail himself out. And Bob Wenzel calls a timeout. So with 12.29 to play, the Tigers lead Rutgers 31-30. We'll be right back after this. That last play by Donnell Lumpkin. That time Lumpkin received the pass from Jones. He knew that the clock was running down. He spun around. He went up, and he, uh, Jimmy Lane had his hand in his face, and he almost like a bullet pass down to Phillips, and he lost the handle. Ball went out on Rutgers. And now we have some new faces in the crowd again. Pete Carrill stays with his five, but Wenzel changes up. Worthy, Rich, Lumpkin, Weiler, and Redden. Cross-court to Looney. Remember what a cross-court pass used to be a, a forbidden in basketball? Now you reverse the ball cross-court all the time, Roy. This is true, but you still have to be careful of throwing that kind of lob pass. Jackson lobs one toward the rim from three-point range and then grabs the rebound as it bounced well off the rim and out front. At that time, Jimmy Lane kind of swung it back out to Jackson. Rutgers has to start checking out if they want to avoid those. Jimmy Lane, the senior from Fanwood and Union Catholic High School, has played well in relief of Rick Hilscher, the freshman on the bench with four fouls. He's been here for four years. He knows, this, he knows the system. He knows the patience. He's been through the war before. And they look inside to Lane. Lane going on Wilder. Wilder got a piece, and it's Rich with the ball. To Steve Worthy on the break. Princeton though gets back on defense. Redden open from the baseline. Good shot that time at Redden. Pump fake, lost his man. 
for the nice short jumper. First basket of the evening for Mark Redden, and the Scarlet Knights are back up by one. And a blocking foul called on Redden as Eastwick really didn't have enough room after he caught the ball to turn. Well, actually, you got, you got to give your man a step. It's very important. If you don't give him a step, you get a foul called. Also, if this would have been at Rutgers, he would have got the foul. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about a little home cooking here at Chadwick. First foul on Redden. And a fresh 45 for the Tigers. 11 minutes to play in the second half. Rutgers up by one. A very well played game from both standpoints of Princeton and Rutgers. Rutgers with a five point lead at the half for Princeton. Now a holding call in the lane. And it's on Chuck Weiler. His second. That time Weiler tried to mug Lane <laughs> in the lane. Mooney to inbound. Sean knew it was a new clock, so he brought the ball out top to set it up. Eastwick, who has been dangerous every time he touches the ball. And Jackson, who has not shot it well tonight. They go to the cutter inside, and it's Jimmy Lane for two. Did a good job of raking the ball around and getting to the open man inside. The Tigers regain the lead midway through the second half. Redden kicks back to Lumpkin. His three-point shot. Rutgers gives Princeton a taste of their own medicine. Yes, it would be very, very good for Rutgers if Lumpkin get hot right now. Lumpkin with 11. Rutgers up by two at 35-33. And here's Jimmy Lane, the center, out top, holding the ball and calling for the motion offense. Well, they say that Pete Carrillo patterns his offense out of the old Celtics offense. Lane for three. No. Eastway kept it alive, but Redden collects for the Scarlet Knights. Bill Carmody, Pete Carrillo, both. Buried their head in their hand after that, <laughs> that shot. Carmody, the assistant coach from Union, has Kirill's mannerisms down pretty well. I tell you, Sean, Sean Jackson has really got himself a workout today. Worthy to Weiler. Inside to Rich and is blocked inside. Good ball movement by Rutgers, but the Tigers turned them away. That time Rich has lost it. I think he was uh, maybe heard some footsteps and just lost the ball in his hands. Another turnover. Tigers down by two. Eight and a half left. Jackson, long three-point shot off the rim and Lumpkin skies for the rebound. Tough night for Sean Jackson. Not shooting well at all. Last year he was fifth in the nation in three-point field goals, averaging three and a half a game. Hilscher back in, replacing Jimmy Lane. And Pete Krill has to be happy about what Lane gave him, filling in for the foul-troubled Hilscher. Oh, without a doubt. Jackson going for the inbound pass. You know, I With like the Jackson. The type of player he is, this guy's been hustling. I've been watching him on the defensive end. He's been hustling every second he's been on the defensive end. He's one of those guys, they say, you know, there's two type of players. Players you go to war with or players you just play with. <laughs> Steve Worthy knocks down a three-pointer. Seven for Worthy, and Rutgers is up by five. It's time for him to start taking over. Start dominating as he did the other night against Wagner. Mooney in the corner, back out top to Jackson, who's 
two of nine from the floor, just one of three from three-point range. There's Hilshire, nice feet to Mooney, who blew the gimme. They have missed so many layups tonight, it's unreal. <laughs> Knowing Petey probably have a layup drill, 12 o'clock tonight. <laughs> How fast can he clear the gym and get a workout going? <laughs> Here's Jackson. Picking up the personal foul. You know, Roy, you're right. Say what you want about Jackson not having a great night offensively, but he's certainly been working at the defensive end of the floor. Oh, without a doubt. He's, I mean, he's hustling on that court, on the defensive end. Timeout on the floor with the score. Rutgers 38, Princeton 33. Well, the Princeton Tigers enjoy some home cooking at Jadwin Gym. They've won 29 straight here. And here's a look at the teams they trail as far as the longest home court win streaks. The Wildcats, the running Rebels of UNLV, and East Tennessee State. Pretty fast company for the Ivy League Tigers. Say the least. But here, as we look at the, uh, the missed lay of that time, that time the ball was in the Hillshire. Nice little shovel pass to Moody, who blows the layup. <laughs> One of the four or five that was missed tonight. And that's why that 29-game home win streak is in jeopardy as Rutgers with the ball and the lead at 38-33. Lumpkin in with Worthy. Here's Worthy. Kicks it in the corner. Redden, a three-point shot. Air ball. But Redden hustling and tracks down the loose ball for the Scarlet Knights. He can't believe it. They're talking, for, they're shouting for a new clock, but the ball didn't hit the rim. Now Tommy Lopes will go over to settle things down here at the scorer's table. It was an air ball. The yes, well, I, ball did not strike the rim. Bobby Wetzel said we're... Whose judgment are we trusting here? <laughs> and Tommy Lopes <laughs> winked at the uh -oh. <laughs> shot clock keeper. And said, you did a nice job. <laughs> Ten on the shot clock. <laughs> Worthy. Off the screen by Weiler. Wild shot. The follow. No. Chuck Weiler. Ah, yeah. Hacked by Mooney inside. Good hustle that time by Wilder. That's the first on Chris Mooney, the fifth team foul on the Tigers. As look at that shot, Wallach gets the rebound, goes up, and Mooney actually gets him on the arm. Chuck Weiler to the line to shoot two. Weiler, wearing number 52 tonight, normally would wear 33, but when his uniform came in, it was the wrong size, so he's the only Scarlet Knight player without his name on the back of his jersey, but Chuck doesn't seem to mind. He makes the first. Okay, he's been playing really hard and aggressive tonight as he plays every night. Four points for Weiler, and it's a 40-33 Rutgers lead with 6.33 to play. Now Princeton has to find the range. They look to Jackson. Jackson from deep in the corner hits the three. Does Ten not, points for Jackson now. Does not surprise me he's the one that steps up to hits the quick shot. I need quite a few more out of him, though. In the five years that the three-point basket has been in college basketball, in two of the years, Princeton has been the best on the floor from beyond three-point range. Indiana has also held that distinction twice. Lumpkin fumbles but regains. He'll try a three. Air ball. Hill of body. Shot to say the least. Ahead of the field to Leftwich. Down it. And a foul on Mark Redden. So my, I had a bad angle from that. It looked like he just swiped at the ball and ran, ran right by him. But the referee was right there, so I have to take his word for it because he's not going to change the call. George Leftwich with six points. You be the judge for yourself. You see the ball in the air. 
Levkovich gets it. Looks like he just brushes right by him. I, I don't see any contact at all. Nevertheless, it's three fouls on Mark Redden. And Leftwich is shooting 69% from the charity strike. This is the three-point chance. Pilcher's nice tip drill to himself, and actually knocked it right back to Leftwich. Tigers down by two with the ball. They look inside to Hilscher, who's working on Weiler. Back out top to Leftwich. Eastwick had an ocean. And Rick Hilscher took steps. That time he was a little bit too, too anxious to make his move. That's why he shuffled his feet. And that situation is all good for a big man just to pause and gather himself and figure out what he wants to do. Jones leaning into the foot court and able to avoid the 10 second call as he got the ball away. 4.50 left. Rutgers leading by two. Worthy to Redden, who got by Mooney, but Mooney guilty of the reach in foul. That's two on Chris Mooney. Mooney tried to give a body block that time. Redden was a little bit quicker than him. You know what, that baseline is always tough because the coaches teach you to cut that baseline off, but so many players just can't seem to get that in their mind. Six team fouls on Princeton, five on Rutgers. Redden, a three-point try off the back of the rim. Eastwood, with good position, fights off Rich for the rebound. That time they left wet red and all along. He kind of was anxiously trying to get the ball. Got it quick and uh, threw up a quick shot. They're on their feet at Jadwin Jim. Tigers down by two to Rutgers. With 4.09 left in the second half. Leftwich just nicks the rim. And Mike Jones is there for the rebound. Princeton has not found the range tonight. And in many cases, credit to Rutgers' defense. Well, both, both teams' defenses have done a great job. Such a different team, the Scarlet Knight team from a year ago when Keith Hughes and Earl Duncan were running the show. It was a very one-on-one -on -one oriented team. But Pete Carrill said before the game, Rutgers looks really happy. There aren't yeah. as many egos on the team, and they're playing some very good basketball. Yes, sir. Last year, they did have a lot of egos, which made it difficult. As the shot clock run down, Mike Jones with the floater through the lane. The, everyone's shouting that the clock was running down. He had to just throw up something, and it turned out to be a good shot. Six for Jones and a four-point lead for Rutgers. Three minutes left. On the low blocks with Chuck Weiler on him. Kicks it back out. Mooney. It's Mooney. Ten points for Mooney. That time they worked it very well. Threw the ball in the Hilster. He waited, took a dribble, got double teamed, kicked it back out, and Mooney hit the three-pointer. And it's a big one as it pulls the Tigers within one with 2.20 left. In a game of this magnitude with a freshman in there playing that kind of ball is great. Worthy tried to draw the foul and missed the shot. I tell you, I thought they were going to call the foul on Hillshire that time. There was some contact, but the refs kind of turned their eyes to it. Two minutes to play. Rutgers on top by one. Princeton, a 29-game win streak here on the home court at Janwin. Rutgers, who upset Penn State and ended their 24-game home unbeaten streak last season. Hilscher in the corner, Leftwich in and out, kept alive by Mooney. Hits the top of the, hit the 45-second block, so it's a Rutgers ball, I believe. 
Oh, we get a timeout, but Pete Durrell dying on that last possession as the ball struck the top of the clock. We'll take a break and return to Jadwin right after this. Pete Jarrell and the Princeton Tigers find themselves down by one with 137 left. They've got 16 fouls, Rutgers with five. What do you do, Roy? Right now, you uh, I think they should keep doing, you know, obviously, keep doing what they're doing, play good, aggressive defense, no fouls, limit Rutgers to one shot, go back down the other end of the court, and make sure any shot you put up is a good shot, a high percentage shot. So Mike Jones will inbound the ball for the Scarlet Knights. Wilson goes with Jones, Worthy, Redden, Weiler, and Alvin Rich. John Jackson and Leftwich now trap the ball. Alvin Rich, backcourt violation. Rich came back for the ball, and it's a key turnover for the Scarlet Knights. Actually, it could have been a foul on Eastwick that time, but because Rich went back and forth, it was a backcourt violation. Now the Tigers, 125 left, down by one with the ball, Eastwick. Watch Preston hold the ball for most of the 45 second clock and get a really good shot this time. Sean Jackson, keeping the defense honest, pulls it back out top now. 20 seconds left in the shot clock. Hilscher screens for Jackson, it's blocked. Weiler to Alvin Rich. He's hammered by Jackson. Counted in the foul. Can you believe it? John Jackson nailed Alvin Rich, and Rich was strong enough to take it to the glass for two. Tommy, great concentration on Rich's part. Sean Jackson, as we see it again, Rich, Rich comes down. And you see Sean kind of swipes at it. He had to be cautious that he didn't get a um, breakaway, breakaway foul. foul right. Oh, very bossy on his part. the three-point play, but Rutgers leading 44-41. Timeout Princeton with 49.2 seconds left on the clock. What a turnaround as Jackson had it blocked. And the Knights get the transition basket. I'm sure Pete Carrillo's over there talking now. They got it set up themselves for a good shot. Has to be a three because they're down by three. Ideal situation, which with, with, I'm sure it won't happen. Take a three, make it, get fouled. Ideal situation. <laughs> I'm sure that's what people would love to see. Hey, you're not doing bad being objective for a Rutgers All-American. <laughs> Believe me, I'm over here kicking myself trying to say, don't say that, don't say that. And here's Bobby Wenzel. One and two against the Princeton Tigers. One in his first year here at Rutgers. Lost to Jadwin and lost last year at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. Not an easy week for Rutgers. They face UNLV on Saturday night at the rack. And then they have Seton Hall on December 11th. Definitely going to be kind of tough for them. Uh, UNLV, even though they lost four of their four great players, is still always tough. They're tough every year. And Seton Hall, we saw them last week. They're going to be tough for Rutgers to handle. Luther Wright will probably play that game also. We better be ready with uh, Arturis Karnishimus out for three to eight weeks for Seton Hall. That was a shame because I thought he was playing a great game also. Here we go. There's the time left. Princeton down by three. And Mike Jones, Rutgers defensive stopper, is on Sean Jackson. Fifteen on the shot clock as Jackson is patient. Leftwich may have gotten away with one. Here's the steal, Steve Worthy. And the Tomahawk jam. Rutgers up 46-41. And I think Preston can turn the lights out. Give him two. Great block by Worthy. Waller. And this one is all over. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Beat 
the Princeton Tigers ending their 29-game home on Beaton Street, 46-41, and look at the scene at Bob Wentzel and the Scarlet Knights. Unbelievable. Great finish to a great game. Excitement throughout. And it was Steve Worthy making the defensive play and then ripping down the court for the jam to win it. And I thought on that jam, I thought he was going to bring down the rim. You know, being that he's from Trenton, most of the guys that he uh, played basketball with are in the Trenton Princeton area, and a lot of them came out there to uh, to congratulate him on the court. That's why I was mugged at half court. All right, so we'll take a break and then return to Jadwin Jim. We'll talk with Rutgers coach Bob Wenzel and Steve Worthy coming up right after this. Welcome back to Chadwin Gymnasium where the Rutgers Scarlet Knights have upset the Princeton Tigers 46-41 joined by Bob Wenzel and Steve Worthy. Bob, uh, you came in you know, early in the day, you told me we had beaten Penn State and stopped their home court unbeaten streak. You pulled it off again tonight. Yeah, we did, and uh, with the help of this guy right next to me and a lot of other guys out there, it's a great game, and uh, it's nice for New Jersey college basketball. So we've got two two years in a row breaking big streaks on teams. It's very satisfying. Bob, tell me a little bit about that weave and what you were able to do play that patient offense against the Tigers. Well, they're patient. We're trying to be patient when we're in the half-court set. Uh, it doesn't work at all if a guy like this doesn't make plays. So uh, it's nice. It gives guys, they they move the ball, and then they just read the defense, and they make the plays that they see fit. And tonight they made a lot of good decisions. Well, I have a question from you. Yeah. Uh, we're, 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 uh, we're question for Worthy. Even though you, you seem like you struggled a little bit tonight from the floor, was there anything going through your mind in, second, in, the, sec in the start of the second half? Um, not really, because as a team, you know, the coach wants me to come out. He wants to rebound and shoot and do whatever I can. If I'm not shooting good, I'm going to rebound good, I'm going to pass good. I wouldn't have to play a all-around game. I didn't come out just to score. Tell me, what went through your mind when you stole that ball at the end of the game and came in for that thunderous dunk? I was going to try to pull the rim down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bob, you were talking about the effort that Steve had against Wagner, a 20-point, 20 28-point effort. He also told us that he had two charges against Wagner, and it was one of his effort at the defensive end that won it for you down the stretch tonight. Well, we had Steve guarding Jackson, and Jackson's their best offensive player. And Steve is a guy who does a lot of very acrobatic things, but he also is a very sound, fundamental player. You mentioned the charges that he took. He made very solid defense. And I don't think they got one or two maybe back doors the entire night. So guys played well with their heads as well as their hearts tonight. All right, let's take a look at that effort by Steve Worthy as we look down the home stretch here. Key possession for the Tigers uh, down by three. And here it is, Steve. Oh, well, it's going to be rough. <laughs> I Just basically, I just try to tear the rim down. That's what I wanted to do. How do you coach this? Well, you don't coach this, but just, the dunk is nice, and that's the exciting part, but really the part that makes the play is his anticipation on defense. And, of course, at that point, we were way ahead, and, and you know, we had pretty much sealed. Thank you very much, Pat, for covering these games, and I'm looking forward to seeing all your fans out there for the rest of our games on New Jersey Network. All right, you got to get ready for uh, Jerry Tarkanian and those Rubbin', running Rebels on Saturday. That's right. It's going to be a little bit different style game, but I think we'll be ready for it. All right, Bob, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Thank okay, you, thank you. Don't forget our next game on New Jersey Network, the New Jersey Athletic Conference, Montclair State and Trenton State, live at 8 o'clock. And, Roy, we can't expect a better finish than the one we had tonight here at Chadwin Gym. I know. It's definitely an exciting finish. And I tell you, it's great to see that Rutgers actually won this game. I had a few side bets with a couple of friends of mine. You know, you had said it was so difficult to come in here. What do you remember about that first game when you came in and saw the uh, the surroundings of Jadwin Gym? Well, the thing I re remember the most about this was actually we lost. <laughs> we didn't have the exciting ending. All I remember is that we lost. I remember um, having a decent game, but the thing that stuck out my mind, since I grew up in this area, I figured I'd come in here and we can, have, I can actually have a good, pretty good game. But um, unfortunately, we lost. All right, well, the Scarlet Knights win tonight. They improved to 2-0 and on the season. The Princeton Tigers fall to 2-2. Two two. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage here on NJN, our PSENG Game of the Week. It's the Rutgers Scarlet Knights defeating the Princeton Tigers 46-41. And so for Roy Hinson, I'm Pat Scanlon. So long, everybody.
Missouri to college ball. score three points, but it was Steve Worthy off the steal for Rutgers. Rutgers won it 46-41, breaking Princeton's 29-game home winning streak. And in Atlanta, the Atlanta against sixth-ranked Seton Hall. Of course, last night, Rutgers beat Princeton 46-41. It was that kind of night for Pete Carrillo as the Tigers saw their 29-game home win streak snapped. Princeton was led by Matt Eastwick's game-high 13 points, but the Tigers shot just 38% from the floor. Rutgers kept its composure, built a five-point lead at the half. Alley-oop to Steve Worthy there. Bob Wenzel's Scarlet Knights led by three, but the Tigers had the ball in the final minute when Steve Worthy makes the steal and races down court, putting the exclamation point on a Rutgers win, their first a Jad win in 15 years. Uh, with the help of this guy right next to me and a lot of other guys out there, it's a great game and uh, it's nice for New Jersey college basketball. So we've got two, two years in a row breaking big streaks on teams. It's very satisfying. Worthy told NJ and Troy Henson what was going through his mind on that final steal. I was going to try to pull the rim down. <laughs> and he almost.